star. A pre while yes. back when the incident occurred with the soul, the soul, the youth map on the media way by Roma Range was soon as video hit me soldier man, right? Since then, right. a lot of threats were coming at who gonna do this, if not the soldier alone after we, the gangs, if this guy the youth man him, but the name of Cypher, he was also a crypt. And the same guy Max was a crypt. So I was there with Roman in prison for the same story when we were rich and Max was like, you know, he knew the deputy gang war now me come. My saying guy Lynn Minot was in the car is at the station giving witness story. Mm-hmm. That he's a witness to the scene. Did the At police strike before, you guys were contacting you or so? No, I never get contact with the police. What about your family? Well, my family, I used to talk to my lawyer to try to see what they can do. Like, but first I said, you're going to turn myself in, but then I tell myself, like, if I turn myself without a, without a, without a case proven I'm innocent. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-off sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. 
The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak-offs, and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Now, I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SCNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. The High Court has ordered the possession of three properties at Peter's Hole along the east bank of Demerara to the Guyana government. The three properties are among several properties that have been compulsory acquired by the government to make way for the new Demerara River Bridge. In granting possession of the three properties to the government, High Court Judge Navindra Singh also ordered that the owners of the properties deliver possession to the government by the 20th of September 2024. A total of 50 properties have been compulsory acquired by the government for the bridge project 
and the vesting of the properties were completed several months ago. While most of the property owners accepted the government's financial offer for the properties, 13 of them refused, prompting the government to move to the court to be granted full possession and for market value of the properties to be determined. In each of the three cases, Justice Navendra Singh ordered less compensation to be paid for the properties than the compensation that the state was offering. Residents of Hay, West Coast Demerara on Saturday assisted the police in capturing an armed robbery suspect while the manhunt continues for his accomplices. On Friday, the suspect, along with three others, entered the home of a businesswoman in Middle Street, Runzit. The businesswoman was relieved of several gold items, while her two workers, both goldsmiths, were robbed of their cell phones. The suspects then started to make demands for more gold and money, and, in the process, one of the suspects fired a shot in the direction of the businesswoman. Nearby residents, alerted by the gunshot, run towards the businesswoman's house. The residents blocked the road and the motor car, which the suspects entered, was not allowed to pass. The gunman and the driver exited the vehicle and escaped on foot into the direction of the Ruinzik backlands. When the police arrived, they discovered a man with his hands and feet tied in the back seat of the car with a head injury. He was questioned about the injury and he claimed that several residents in the area hit him in the head, the police said. The Guyana Police Forces Office of Professional Responsibility is investigating a recent incident where a bystander was shot and injured. Injured is Castle Nurse, a 27-year-old businessman of La Penitence, Georgetown. He was shot on September 14. Police headquarters said that an anti-crime patrol, led by a gazetted officer and other ranks, was on patrol duty when they received information that two men riding motorcycles around the Burda Market area were acting suspiciously. The ranks reportedly confronted the two motorcyclists, and when the men saw the ranks, they fled down Rob Street with the ranks in pursuit. One of them drew a firearm and discharged several rounds in the direction of the ranks, while one of the ranks drew his service pistol and fired several rounds at the shooter. During the exchange of gunfire, the businessman, who was standing next to his motor car parked outside a nightclub, was shot in the right foot. He was taken to Georgetown Public Hospital for medical treatment, and his condition is regarded as stable. And Roman Roberts called Arsenal. Both of you are, as I understand, are wanted by the Ghana Police Force for a September 12 murder of Akim Hema called Max. Um, somebody that you know and somebody that I know reached out to me and um, both persons are claiming that you you guys are innocent. So, Roman, could you um, enlighten me? Tell me um, why should the public believe or the police believe that you're innocent? Okay, sir. Well, these guys, well, they've always been coming after me. It's not the first time. Multiple times I've heard that a whole car load of mine is here and is looking for me. All over the place, everywhere I go online, I used to go out and say, nope. Like, for example, you know, to go and buy chicken at one of the chicken place. So, you know, chill a little. So, and these guys would normally pull up. Uh, they, they are from Crane. One of them named Kadim. He was a driver of the vehicle who exited with a... Uh, well, it, I don't know, but it was a long gun. When he exited the car, I don't know what it was. It was a long mouth. And the other one in the passenger seat, who is the deceased, um, Max. That is what I know he has because uh, due to an incident last year why what i was arrested for on a january guy in jail and he was like if i was on the road like this is direct speech of what he is saying if i was on the road he would be one of them who would come for me and so and so but he we never had no problem or so in those none but i don't know i hardly came out I hear I already came out of there last week or the week before. And well I didn't know it was them put up in the car, but due to information I have, right? Anyway, on September twelfth I was in my yard preparing to go out. Right? 
my girl was in her bed, uh, in our bed, jump put in our clothes, when I saw a green, dark, pin top old model car. I can't say if it's a 212 or what, but it's an old model, dark, green car, pin top. I saw two men exited the vehicle, and I heard a loud explosion, and I saw a spark. But I was looking at them, I was in the front yard. When I saw that, I saw they start running coming. So then is when I ran. After I ran, I ran and I jumped the fence on the neighbor side. And after I jumped the fence, now sir, I hid. And when I hid, I heard nothing. Like, nothing other than two, an next loud explosion. But they were running coming to me. And after the second loud explosion, I heard nothing. Nothing. Just dead silence. And after five to ten minutes, like, I came out and jumped back in the neighbor, sent some people from in the neighbor yard and, you know, saw that no one was there, nobody else was coming. And two minutes after, like, I received a call that said that, that I shoot somebody and they died. And I don't know. But this wasn't the first time they came. Up to two weeks before, they came and they ran me. And I had to run for my life, sir. And this, so, and the pool. One question, before you go any further. You were saying that when this gun load, this car load of men pulled up, you recognize the person who died here, Max. You recognize him? He was in the car? No, sir, I did not recognize him. Okay. I so recognize you, the driver. The driver. the driver of the car. Okay, so you knew you knew Max from prison. Yes, sir. And what was the incident in prison that led to a disagreement between you two? No, well, as I said earlier, we did not have any incident. He said, "Jew, so why I was in prison? He would have been." one of them who would have came for me to retaliate and right. we did right. not have no incident in prison but i don't know pardon me why 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 would he just come for you like that sir a pretty while yes. back when the incident occurred with the soul the soul the youth map on the media way by roma range was so that video hit me soldier man right since then, right. a lot of threats were coming at. Who gonna do this? It's not the soldier alone after we. The gangs, is this guy, the youth man, by the name of Cypher. He was also a crip. And the same guy, Max, was a crip. So I was there with Roman in prison for the same story when we were rich. And Max was like, you know, he knew the death the gang. Warren and me come off of the thing, thing. We smoke together, we chill as normal. This is all you know, Max from in jail. You know what I mean? And it was like, now, then he warned us, if. He, he went out on the road and we went out of the road to be one and then they're coming through it. But done with the see the left life done. Since you we come out of jail, it had different threats coming at you know, people who can come through it. If people mess with people on Facebook, they're gonna kill you, they're gonna do this, you don't like see we in town, you can find two park, there's those there to see. You know what I mean? We never take okay. it serious until twice it had a, the same thing a car pull up and stand it on a time. Whereby I was lying in there, then a few minutes after I leave, I get a car, some car just put up for the little mask, come on, claiming you come looking for art, not and skinny, you know. So from there on, it left me traumatized studying. But I never take it seriously because I never see this car come. We in the front yard, stand up waiting for to go party, yours. I didn't I dressed in. When she dressed in, we observe a car just pull up. Just so two men exit the car, one in front, one in behind. One so one and one angle in the air. Then you head to the yard. When you head to the yard, you exit and start run to the back. When you run to the back, and, and that was it. The second, the second shot bust, and we run and I I, I, I throw there for like two to three minutes while we listen with, with the two explosion alone. We didn't hear back nothing more. But then we head to the front of the neighbor yard and people see the yard gone. They decide to exit the place to the back yard and start to run because we didn't know if the gun exactly they are going to come back or what. Run away. Once we run away, Family start to turn to the air, well, the air police come by the house shooting at three and one. So we tell it, not police. It's people come there for shoot at three. Because we 
the home. We have to, we left we place go by, you know, but the people come from tail with a living at the residence. You know what I mean? Come on, run, yeah. What 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 um, what do you know about the death of Akim Hema called Max? You have any information as to how he died? How he was killed? No. No, honestly, all I know is that when the two parts entered the car, the two loud nights and I run away. After that, I hear well, this man, some man died. I didn't know who was the man that died until I see it on the media. This, this Max, and I check the lady, this is the same Max from prison. And I got a picture and I start up, well, this is the, this is the Max here. You know me, I didn't know what him, I, did, I don't know none of the individual. I'm not familiar with any one of them. Did you hear that? You know, people yeah. saying, well, yeah. Did you hear that perhaps Hema was in that same car among the group of men that came and shot behind you guys and it was probably one of the same bullets that killed him? Correct is right because there was a guy called Fata that they sell weed. I or give him to get him some thought yet and I got all the whole thing and some Kadim, Linden, you know, word starts spreading in the streets, people start talking after some things happen. Who knew what's in the car, who come here and it's like it even had a weakness, but I doubt the weakness would come for, for speak out for several this Africa. I mean, nobody wants to get put in a position where they gotta hide for the life or they gotta go in a courtroom for speak send nobody else to jail. So it's like they would rather if I come and tell you in person, come on immediately for speak it, they wouldn't. But me in favor of company made and speak, I you know I didn't squeeze a trigger and we didn't had no gun at the position. We didn't even prepare for a gun fight with anyone. We waiting on a board. They I have pictures proving we we don't need to start making video with clean clothes, fresh clothes by waiting for the girlfriend to finish dressing in the room when this scene occur. So who would want to frame you guys based on what you're telling oh. me that, that you sent? Who would want to frame you guys? So well, I can't really say unless it's somebody who's playing care at Japiri Hospital or I don't know, me you know, oh, to the hospital, but it's right in the same circle. And I got the other car that the same guy Linda that was in the car is at the station giving weakness story. Mm -hmm. That is a witness to the scene. Did the police try to contact you guys for contacting you or so? No, I never get contact with the police. What about your family? Well, my family, I used to talk to my lawyer. I try to see what they can do. Like, at first, I'm going to turn myself in, but then I tell myself, like, if I turn myself without a, 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 a case proven I'm innocent, it's the 10 to 12 years I'm spending in jail for something that me and know about. And then when time won't pass, it's innocent, then the story might be dismissed for me, all life gone, and jail for nothing at all. So I rather if I prove myself innocent from afar, then if it's a case where I have to come in and speak, in force and I would, but I got to make sure I get myself evidence proving that I understand. Because a lot of people in the media bashing, saying a lot of things, which I don't care if people say because people must got their own opinion. Everybody must got their own side of the story. But the only side of that know the story is going to come in the car and if it was in the yard. And with me and Roma, it's going to come in the car. Interesting. If anybody else side of the story is here, sir. Here's it. So you did not squeeze a trigger behind I Max. I can't scare it from the life. No. Me had no chance to squeeze on trigger because I didn't have a gun. We noticed a car stop. Right. When this car stop, I was making a video. I got this video. My phone too, I making a video in front of me, sir. So I look up to the car stop. And I, when I, cast, I see the car, I press out the video, I watch the car. You drive a side exit and the front seat exit. You got in the front seat and a white jar He stepped to the bridge right. and he put his hand in the air. And that is, when I hear the pie start run, I run to the side, excited the room, and we run to the back. When we run to the back, it's not an explosion song. I go to the side of the yard, the explosion go off. When it go off now, we keep running, we jump the fence, and we start, we hear back, no more nice, no more song. Until we like, think when the place still clear, we start people see the car from in front of the yard, but the neighbor, the people from in front, you see the car gone, we can't go to the gun, but we didn't too sure. We still run to the back and we go away like from there. Because we ensure sure they're going to come back or wait the the, if they exit the car truck and the yard on. Was this Pardon? incident reported to the police? Was this incident reported to the police? 
after it happened. Yes. Well, I didn't have a chance to go to the station. I didn't have no chance to go to make a report at the station because after it happened, I fled and I ran away from the, the scene of what I just created. This for the second thing I heard is that a car come that we are left. So police say, yeah, that's a shootout. So but I couldn't explain. They saying, well, come on. So I was like, I coming on. Then I forget a call out. The, the police just go in by Arsenal saying that they want it for some murder. So I said, murder? So right to me, me, you know, because if they want it for murder, I was in the yard. It, it automatically means that they gonna want me for murder too. Mm-hmm. And then another morning, I place like around 11, 30, 12. And I woke up, I saw my patron immediately wanted bulletin for Max murder. What would you like to say to the police and the... Hey. Mohammed, I love you. You see this bear? You are my lover till I die. I love you so much. And the good you do for poor people. God is going to bless you and put you in the right way, my love. Yes, I know you are a young girl, but you got like this old woman. And I be right, left, center, put it in the center. My love, I love you so much. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula. Packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. Well, anyways, the reason I call all you here is because I have some news for you. Terrence, didn't tell you you're going to be a daddy again. Oh, well, that is all extravagant news. I'm not the mommy. What? Well, what? 